Welcome to Engineering Update, brought to you by Electronic Component News. I'm Melissa Barnes, Associate Editor of ECN and ECN Asia. In this week's headlines, Watson goes to college, nano batteries for microelectronics, creating 3D microchips, and DARPA brings Mission Impossible Tech to life. Watson, no, not Sherlock's famous sidekick, but the famous supercomputer who beat the world's best human at Jeopardy, is going back to school. IBM is sending the Watson system to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, where it plans to enroll in English and math. Since Watson is a cognitive system capable of processing massive amounts of data, it can apparently improve its thinking skills through interpretive human language. When it beat the Jeopardy! champs in 2011, Watson was given the contents of everything from encyclopedias and dictionaries to movie scripts and news articles. With over 15 terabytes of memory, Watson has proven himself capable of storing vast amounts of information. However, its engineers want to strengthen Watson's ability to successfully handle and understand all this complex data on a more human level, because making robots more human always works out just fine. So despite the Skynet-like potential, researchers at RPI and IBM will introduce Watson to a new way of thinking by giving it a deeper understanding of the structure of sentences and dialogue. They want to improve Watson's ability to handle the immense variety of unstructured data transmitted over the web, which currently overwhelms the supercomputer's abilities to collect and discern information. So it will have that in common with many of its classmates. IBM hopes to improve Watson's cognitive capabilities over the course of this three-year, far from elementary, education. Oxford University scientists recently solved one of the greatest issues associated with the production of graphene, the one atom layer thick of carbon used in a variety of electronics. The typical technique of growing graphene involves chemical vapor disposition, which forms tiny flakes in random orientations. They leave their defects in the form of seams between flakes, which eventually grow together. These defects ultimately weaken and prevent electrons from flowing smoothly. Embracing this industry-wide mantra of stronger, better, but less expensive, the Oxford team has now discovered how graphene flakes can be assembled by manipulating the alignment of carbon atoms on copper foil. At the atomic level, they are able to guide the orientation of the carbon atoms that grow atop one another, controlling their thickness to ultimately smooth out the overall material. By incorporating the more affordable copper-based sheets, the manufacturing of graphene at the industrial scale becomes more efficient. Of course, with life imitating art, or in this case sports, an announcement regarding tests for PECs, performance enhancing copper, is expected shortly. A new thumb-sized battery called the Nano Tritium can power microelectronics for over 20 years. It is now commercially available through City Labs. This battery could make the installation of microelectronic devices easier, especially in locations that are expensive, dangerous, and hard to reach. The key is a substance known as tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen which provides a relatively benign beta voltaic that can supply a continuous flow of low-powered electrons over a long period of time. This substance is already commonly used in self-luminescent products like vehicle dials, paints, and watches. Independent testing has found the beta voltaic power source to be highly resilient in extreme temperatures, vibrations, and altitude. The nanotritium battery is reportedly long-lived and resilient, as well as hermetically sealed in a solid form. A City Lab spokesperson said that higher power batteries are currently under development that could provide tens of microwatts over the long haul, as well as short bursts of milliwatt power. This new kind of battery may be used in intelligent sensors, medical implants, deep space probes, and deep sea oil wells. Until recently, the development of practical 3D microchips has been stifled by the issue of moving data and signals from one layer of circuitry to another, which ultimately results in a lot of heat inside the 3D circuit. Now, physicists at the University of Cambridge have developed a vertically layered spintronic shift register, which allows the information to be passed between different layers more efficiently. This allows for moving data in a new direction between circuitry layers. In order to accomplish this, the team prepared stacks of alternating ultra-thin layers of various metals to demonstrate how spintronics might facilitate vertical transport of data between layers. The first layer is a cobalt-iron-boron magnetic layer, placed between platinum. The second layer is ruthenium, which is less than a nanometer thick. The advantage of using these ultra-thin magnetic films is that the domain walls are very narrow, which allows for the potential of smaller, more efficient spintronics. 
However, rapidly flipping magnetic fields are not so great for large-scale integrated circuitry. To overcome this challenge, researchers are hoping to improve performance by moving the magnetically encoded data and flowing spin-polarized currents from layer to layer, thereby causing the domain structure interaction to occur biodirectionally. By harnessing the inner power of the materials at the elemental level, researchers hope to improve the capabilities of 3D microchips. As military electronics have become less expensive, they can become casualties themselves or worse, missing in action. This makes it possible for the valuable and secret information they hold to be scavenged by the enemy. Enter DARPA's Vanishing Programmable Resources Program, which is currently investigating the use of special electronics designed to self-destruct on command. That's right, Mission Impossible is becoming a reality. In their efforts to help the military prevent classified technology from being leaked, the program is now accepting proposals for basic research into this new technology called transient electronics. The new field is taking its direction from the successful use of self-dissolving biomedical implants. The breakdown of the military devices could be triggered by a signal sent from command or any number of possible environmental conditions, such as temperature. That wraps up this week's report. I'm Jeff Ranke, and your engineering update will self-destruct in four, three, two, one.